Well, Grassley, every single video that you've recommended has been terrifying. And um, if, 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 I don't know. I don't know. No, it hasn't been terrifying. It's been pretty good. But I'm excited for this one. So do maternal review. Alpha male gay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck you. You were never one of us. I fucking love this game. But this dude was horrifying, especially in the in the first expansion. In Ancient Gods Part 1. That was probably one of the most satisfying kills ever though, because like it took me a really long time to kill him. Doom Eternal is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices yeah, that cause me to create a sun via mitosis. In this adventure, you play <laughs> as John Doom, a man stricken with irrationally severe autism who does not consider Literally or think through his actions and effects on other people. And in his quest to save mankind, I wanna kills play Doom God, Eternal God, again. God God, and Satan God God, who is also himself. If yep. this in-depth and engaging, hardcore male gameplay sounds appealing, then I've got the game for you. This game is of course the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016 with a ah. few key differences. Alright then, buddy. I'm going to shit yourself. <laughs> Which meaningfully extends and builds off of the gameplay and challenges that we love, then extends them some more off of a fucking cliff until the product that emerges out the other side resembles crack concentrate. Dude, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've probably horribly, played the game since I don't actually horribly. want to help people buy Things. I'm here to entertain people, and if you're clamoring for good. entertainment and haven't purchased this game yet, do yourself a favor. There's enough male hormones here to transition someone, and I can guarantee you results, my fellow Sigma males. So whether you're a psychopath like me or new to modern Doom games, come with me on this amazing journey through Twitch gameplay, beautiful environments, nonsensically fucked up lore, and remixed Mongolian <laughs> drug singing. Dude, who money even, is like, temporary, on but Doom, Doom is eternal. Exactly. The gameplay was pretty nutty. I, I would say the, the Doom Lori Eternal's gameplay is in. quite unique, and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, and unilaterally combat system, from which the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. Yes every good game ever. If I, for instance, became 12 and booted up GTA 5, I would be able to do at least a dozen unfun <laughs> activities. Doom's design is focused harder than the average Persona fan on his local playground, and that is special. You will play the game in the way that is fun, or you will lose. So as good as 2016 was, a Polygon journalist could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable. Because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I get to What's choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. Bad. Yet Doom Eternal asks the question, why not force you to use every mechanic all the time without stopping? In a world where AAA studios try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best, and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the main component of that gameplay is the arsenal, because John Doom uses every weapon throughout the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it isn't a replacement, it's a genuine addition to your arsenal. Every one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off. Fire a rock. Fire a ballista. Fire flame. Freeze him. Fire fire on his freezing fro. Shotgun. Shotgun. Brain aneurysm. Just as important oh as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only way to get ahead of the competition is to kill them. How do I heal when low? Kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill, kill them, them with a chainsaw. In addition, most weapons in the game have two mods which completely change their behavior. Hey, Such stunning examples would be the microwave beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit's cool. <laughs> but on top of eight weapons, 12 mods, and a declining mental state, we keep yeah. going more than any one weapon. You'll be using your suit abilities, and Dude, they in all Ancient have Gods individual buttons. One and two, this is in I addition to the eight like that you use for weapons. These would be prices. things like zoom for fast, grenade yep. for death, Swedish grenade for life, punch for no reason, and a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's a fucking <laughs> moonlight tonight. I thoroughly recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast or play on easy mode, that's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two more buttons? You thought I was done. There's two ways to kill a demon in Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize the funniness level, we have the Crucible, which is a direct, instantaneous kill on every enemy. Giant area boss, not, dead. Not everyone, Previous though. area boss, dead. The final boss. Fuck him. Now I hear you thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strange.
strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second super weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically Dude, stands I misuse the big BFG fucking so gun. Much. Also canonically, it I fires a hole directly so into the core of Mars. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface mm, Watch me, bitch. <laughs> Now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the ATF at Waco. It clears out he everything you can see instantly. I am so thankful the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard mode. And because you're always learning as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets you choose what stats and runes to upgrade. I spec entirely into mobility and ammo, making my character a flimsy, crack-addled spider monkey. As as a side note, we should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. They can survive there. Why does Thailand get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what more is there to learn about Doom Eternal? Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may shock you. Those are the- As you may have guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small, blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety of the demons that make the game interesting. Demons can fly. They can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Who is Sandy Lowe? Who is Sue Shima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. The point of the entire game, therefore, is to balance targets, switch weapons, Does and scream game? internally oh. as you repeatedly fail to be cool. Just like high school. What I'm getting at is every demon has completely different behavior and goals from one another. The Doom Hunter rolls around in a comically small tank. The zombies, like us, exist to die. And the Marauder <laughs> produces controversy. He does a lot of damage, blocks He's a your piece attacks, of shit. Fights you Come at on, wild say how it is. and can only be attacked after asshole. blatantly signaling so. I personally have no issue with him, as I find the challenge fun and engaging. And if you don't, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm saying you're bad. I'm not getting into the details for each one, since that's not funny, but don't worry, there are 27 of them without DLC. And if you're wondering why I'm fighting the entire cast of Dante's Inferno, <laughs> you're actually what? the minority. This game tries at every moment to make exposition collectible. Why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet, and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people. You cannot stop the procession. It feels like one guy wrote the events of the game and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. So I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. If I say something objectionable, just pretend that it's right. One Brazilian years ago, there was a guy named The Dad, who was effectively God, and he made moths in lamp heaven called <laughs> The Makers. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective consciousness into one giga moth called The Con Maker, who is the moth pope. So the moths the rule of the galaxy, sort of, until Earth happens, and then we start fucking everything up. The moth pope <laughs> finds John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about hell before God. Anyways, the moth pope, after finding out that hell is real, very reasonably decides to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the moth do whatever they wanted. So now the con maker cannot be replaced and cannot die, so she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now the plan is to get some of that sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets to the Dark Lord in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change, and we need to find a new energy source. So instead of something hard and difficult like solar power, Samuel Hayden is like, what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell? Also, it's on Mars. Earth does this until Hell begins breaking into Mars and John Doom stops them, which is the plot of Doom 2016. This makes Samuel Hayden mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't want to build a windmill. So instead of destroying the demonic crucible, he just brings it back to Earth and catapults John Doom into the backstory planet. If you think that sounds unreasonable, just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel. I only poo-poo farted for the good of you. Unsurprisingly, demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy for the Moth Pope, so John Doom has to fight both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, oh sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. <laughs> Doom Slayer, you'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what'd he do? He's the chariot so The plot of the main game, to understate it, is psychotic, and acts as an increasing checklist of galactically convoluted 
convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times, goes to the North Pole to kill Santa, fights Croatia, does a little trolling, does a little cockfighting, invades heaven, and permanently kills God, but we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe on a fucking bungee cord, so I understand completely when people say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just yeah. wrong. I play Doom Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you, but Eternal's plot is pure insanity, and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware that the plot exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just don't care. I played every single level, gleefully wondering, oh boy, what stupid shit is next? I cannot fucking we wait. We should play it again, so but on play a the game level. for the plot. It is integral to the experience of Doom Eternal. Oh, but Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first? Everything I've said so far, except some of it, applies in full partially to the base game, but there's 40 dollar dues of DLC where the gameplay is faster, the challenge harder, and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments. 2016 was a wash. Eternal is Usain Bolt, and the ancient gods is fucking Venezuelan inflation. You thought it was over when John Doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven, but you were wrong. That's just the beginning. And with both parts of the DLC now fully out, my recommendation cannot be understated. Let's get into why, and more importantly, what... This section of the video is going to be different, far more structural, and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope yeah. by simping for 2D women. I will tell I you if there's a very big gameplay game game change, but the point of the DLC but is more or less amazing. If DLCs. you like Doom Eternal, you will like the though. DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political YouTube debates advocating for carbon positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot, he's a fucking angel. Also, John Doom's Alexa is God. That's not a joke or exaggeration. His name is Vega, and he is the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, the video can't count as spoilers because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC is essentially trolling because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously to revive Satan, exclusively so you can fight him. What could go wrong? Of particular note here on the gameplay side is the final boss, who is Samuel Hayden. Because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous, and my enjoyment of the game is hurt oh, by neither. Every aspect this of this is speedy, fun, and everything else I've already said about the game in general. Fuck, and when you finally beat Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. Yeah. The only thing in the and world that could possibly a, kill John Doom um, himself. For the second part of the expansion. Yep. No blood. He looked pretty cool, not gonna lie. It was pretty sick. And then when you actually like fight him, you're like, oh. <laughs> So now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong and the so second sexy. DLC is just chasing him. This is of course where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How does one get to the capital city of hell? Well, that's a great question. First of all, go to the planet of Argentinur. Light the bat signal. Learn how to train your dragon, okay? Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason. Get the key to the gate of Divum. Now go back to Earth, traverse the Last of Us 2, and find the gate of Divum. But before I get to the final showdown with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sand, there's some cool <laughs> gameplay I want to talk about. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC. Primarily used to defy the laws of gravity, but secondarily gives you everything in the game. Health? No problem. Ammo? Absolutely. My deepest, darkest urges? Yes. As I used this, I became more obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking Builder. And there's plenty of demons to use it on, since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, yep. the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft Pinball, who is fun to fight, I promise. And the blood makers. They are my original OC. Do not steal it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC to gain style. This is the culmination of all of our work. The final battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Cleveland lives up to the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe which implicitly acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you, your identical twin <laughs> with red eyes in a Gundam. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a beautiful send-off right up until the man the himself the awkwardly world. waddles around the arena like a like penguin, the first but that's times, fine. The fight is still cool. Fuck. I was so wow, close to so ripping Steve my Jobs hair out while I was doing Steve my freaking Jobs. gameplay. Ligma balls. <laughs> Got him! <'em. laughs> 
Now, before we defenestrate, there's a few details I want to talk about that truly complete this game, make it a real 10 out of good. Firstly, I would classify the music of this game as metal without guitars, amazing. and I fucking dig it so fucking much. Amazing. How do you make metal without a guitar? Well, you sample Mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower. It just sounds so good. Normally, music isn't very important, but it's so good that it becomes important. And the role <laughs> it plays in setting your mood is vital. Also, the main composer, Mick Gordon, like me, hey watches virtual YouTubers every waking second of his day. Great minds think alike. In fact, most of the music in this video is just Doom Eternal soundtrack. Guess you'll have to re-watch it over and over again to really listen. Dude, when Finally, I go pick up Kevin now, really I'm just gonna good. have Not the Doom the, Eternal oh, wow, soundtrack and also the Doom 2016 soundtrack. Out it's more like, how does literally Smashing anyone have time to model speakers. all of the geometry in the game? It is unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. Doom Eternal is such a fast and pulse-pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking loop. Like how am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it looks like this? Should you buy the game? Yes, I am very biased. If speed and action is what you crave and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your <laughs> game. I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel in exchange for their souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, run, they're coming. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna say that's my favorite video I've watched in a fucking long time and that i'm sorry but that's including that's including the kenobi trailer no, I'm, I'm joking I'm, i really like the kenobi trailer uh it's like thank you so much for subscribing that is for four months thank you oh my gosh thank you so much my dude hii at jntcc love the hair less than three <laughs> thank you thank you so less than three what it's a heart you little shit thank you so much resume the download i shall i shall my dude Thank you so much for that recommendation, Grasley. That was fucking amazing. And I'm going to be watching a lot more of this guy's channel. That was a lot. He talks so quickly, but I can finally understand what he means because this is what I need. This is what I need people to talk like because I fucking talk like crazy. <laughs> no, it was, it was. I assume that this is what it feels like to... to... words. <laughs> Drugs. Yep, yep, that's it. But that was fucking amazing, though. That was probably the best summary of all the Doom games that I've actually heard. Like, Doom 2016 was alright, it was fucking amazing. Uh, Doom Eternal was incredible. When it came out, it was fucking amazing. The gameplay at the very end was just, wow. The final glory kill, wow. Um, I also didn't finish Doom 2016 on stream because I played it off stream whenever, um, sorry, when my internet cut out, so I just played, like, the full ending, and I was raging like crazy when I was going against that bitch, the fucking spider-looking, brain-looking bitch. She was hard to go against. That was, that was my first dip into how horrifyingly painful Doom can be. And then I was, I was shown Doom Eternal Ancient Gods Part 1, and that's when I knew. Real pain and misery that was really bad and then doom ancient ghost part two was pretty good i think I, th I think part two was a lot better than part one story wise part one was really good but then the, and and like the cliffhanger made it a lot better especially seeing like your literal like alter alter self be like the big big boy big bad boy <laughs> at the very end of the game that no, was cool i very I, I very much enjoyed it if you guys want to play doom eternal or any of the expansions again i would fucking love to do it do you guys want to do it i want to fucking let's do it is it time for some more salad eating asmr salad soggy i don't want it all right anyway i'm gonna go now <laughs> i hope